as we are expecting, Sony finally revealed their upcoming PlayStation Plus relaunch, or revamp, if you will, where there's going to be three new tiers. Classic games, downloads, streaming, uh, full game trials. We've got pricing details. We've got uh, the SA president and CEO Jim Ryan talking about this new service, or what is principally the same service, but now things on top of it. So we have a lot of things to go over. Let's get started. Let's begin with the uh, the tiers. So the first one would be uh, PS Plus Essentials. This is basically PS Plus as we know it today. It'll include two downloadable games, exclusive discounts, cloud storage, and online multiplayer. Uh, basically, that's going to stay the same if you're a current Plus subscriber, you're rolling into Essentials. Uh, then there's PS Plus Extra. This adds a catalog of 400 PS4 and PS5 games downloadable only. This will be $14.99 USD monthly or $100 for the full year up front. And then there's PS Plus Premium. This adds an additional 340 classic games. Uh, PS3 will be streaming only. And then a new catalog of PS1, PS2, PSP games uh, will be added, both downloadable and streaming. And there's also uh, full game trials. The price is $17.99 USD per month or $120 for the full year. Then there's this uh, PS Plus Deluxe Edition. This is basically in select markets. And to boil it down, this is going to be something where it's only available in markets where there's no streaming functionality whatsoever. So it'll be a lower cost than PS Plus Premium, but it will not offer PS3 streaming or any streaming for that matter. So you can still download PS1 to PSP Classics, the PS4, the PS5 titles. Uh, it'll include everything else, but you're not going to be able to stream games. And that's why it's going to be a cheaper price. And that'll be in all the markets where... Basically, if you live somewhere without PS Now, you're going to be able to subscribe to PS Plus Deluxe. And apparently, they're still working on rolling out streaming to those uh, to those markets. Uh, other key points to note here is that at launch games such as Death Stranding, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Mortal Kombat 11, and Returnal will be offered. I'm sure there's a, a lot more, but at least those are some of the ones that they were willing to name right now. Uh, the PlayStation Now branding will be dropped, and that's something we were tipped off ahead of time, so that would make sense here. Uh, and it will launch in June and roll out in phases. So at least initially, several markets in Asia will be first, then North America, Europe, and the rest of the world. Now, over on GamesIndustry.biz, speaking with uh, Christopher Dring, the SA president and CEO Jim Ryan, of course, did deliver some comments uh, and responded to some questions. And of course, the one thing that was asked was about, you know, day and date first party games. We were, you know, expecting the entire time. Don't, uh, well, don't expect it more or less. And uh, this is his response. And I quote here where he says, in terms of putting our own games into the service or any of our services upon their release, as you well know, this is not a road that we've gone down in the past. And it's not a road that we're going to go down with this new service. We feel if we were to do that with the games that we make at PlayStation Studios, that virtuous cycle will be broken. The level of investment that we need to make in our studios would not be possible. And we think the knock-on effect on the quality of the games that we make would not be something that gamers want. Uh, now, he doesn't rule out this possibility completely. He does say later on in this interview, and I quote here, So I don't want to cast anything in stone at this stage. All I'm talking to today is the approach we're taking in the short term. The way our publishing model works right now, it doesn't make any sense. But things can change very quickly in this industry, as we all know. Now, when it comes to the overall pricing strategy and ultimately what they're trying to go for here, he says, and I quote, It is a fact, for our services at least, that the great majority of people subscribe through a 12-month subscription. It's more than two-thirds who subscribe that way. That is an area of value proposition that we've looked at very hard. What we are delivering is that for a 12-month subscriber, and that is a great majority of people, the monthly subscription rate for PlayStation Plus Extra will be $8.33, and for PlayStation Plus Premium, it will be $9.99. We think, for what people are going to get, this is a terrific value proposition, and one that simply wouldn't be possible if we were to put our studio's games into the service upon their release. Now, interestingly, Jim Ryan feels a subscription model in the game sector won't reach the same levels of something like Spotify or Netflix, instead mentioning that live service games seem to be where the market and where people are trending to, uh, both on and outside of console when it comes to spending you know, spending money on a monthly basis, it's not really a good comparative to say that, you know, gaming can reach a, a level of Spotify or Netflix and that uh, on a per title basis, that might be something that more people trend to over time. And so at least that's how they feel right now. But he does make it important to note that it's all about offering options when it comes to the uh, the streaming or the, the classic games and how they're in the top tier. He more or less calls out that streaming is still not widely um, accepted or a lot of people are into and same with classic games, which is, you know, it, uh, it may sound strange, but that is true where the vast majority of consumers nowadays, 
and this uh, probably is it's this has likely been true for you know decades where uh, most consumers they move on to the next thing so that they're not actively playing older titles or uh, legacy platforms right so like currently you know ps4 is still relatively new and we're in diminishing returns anyway where ps4 games don't feel that far off from say a native ps5 game right but i digress the point is most consumers aren't playing ps1 2 3 psp content um, so that's why it's more of a, a top tier feature next to the streaming which we also probably are well aware of the fact that most people don't uh, stream games or they don't prefer to stream games they would you know instead like to download titles but that's why they're approaching it that way uh, but there are a few other things to note here so namely there's no ps5 uh, server blades so you can't stream ps5 games only download which uh, is probably going to be okay for a lot of folks i i gather uh, the most important option is there downloading native ps5 titles so that's good to see uh, and also no mention of being able to buy classic titles separately but in fairness, we don't know the lineup and there's still a lot left to be revealed. Obviously, the service isn't launching or, or relaunching until June and being rolled out in different territories. So um, there's still holdout and uh, we'll see. I think they probably will offer those titles to be uh, bought separately, um, but we'll, we'll see. For the titles that can be downloaded, I would assume they'll let you buy PS1, 2, and PSP. The one thing that we don't see is them allowing you to buy a PS3 as a streaming option, right? You can subscribe, you can, well, back when it launched, you could rent PS3 games. That was that was very strange, but I think they'll reserve that to, uh, well, not being able to buy something is the, uh, the streaming functionality outright, but I, I would hope that they'll let you buy games individually. We'll see. Uh, and then also the total library, if you say subscribe to PS Plus Premium, because in theory, across PS1, 2, 3, 4, PS5, PSP, this should be around 1,100 to 1,200 games, which there's a, a slight discrepancy here because the, the PS blog post says uh, over 700 titles, but right now PS Now currently has, you know, 800 plus games, where, you know, about 500 are PS3. And then, you know, three to 400 are PlayStation 4 titles. And then maybe like a handful are PS2. I'm not sure how many PS2 games uh, they have on PS Now. I mean, in total, the PS2 Classics program on PS4, there was like 56 something games. Um, and I think maybe 20, 30 of them are on PS Now. But either way, you've got 800 titles there. And then if you go to the, um, the bullet point about the classic games, it says 340 additional games, which is why I'm kind of coming to, you know, 1100, possibly 1200 something games for a total library, which would be very good, actually. It's just uh, not entirely sure how they're adding this up uh, across the board, but I would presume that everything that's currently on PS Now is staying, unless uh, a lot of licenses are expected to expire and that they're going to time that with this relaunch. But, you know, we're kind of, again, digressing here. Um, Either way, uh, the library in theory could be quite large. And then also Sony's aiming for existing subscribers currently, not necessarily new ones. And they're also banking on the value uh, being there for the annual subscription, as Jim Ryan noted. So um, already seeing a lot of talks online about, uh, you know, the monthly fee. And it's a very easy way to say, you know, the top tier is $18 a month. And that, and that sounds really expensive. And if you subscribe per month, then yes, it is very expensive. But if you pay annually, which uh, would be uh, $120, so $10 a month, then you're getting access to all those features, which um, by and large does not sound terrible. And this is kind of uh, the weird rock and a hard place I've always found PS now where, um, you know, the, the branding in particular has a lot of baggage. And I've noticed that throughout this entire rumor right when the bloomberg report came out and then more rumors kept you know discussing about what it's going to be oh here's what the tiers are here's what it's going to include i've noticed that so many people uh even those that you know are, are reporters and whatnot they are misconstruing what's even on the service or overlooking you know how many titles are on there it's it's strange ps now has so much baggage in that people just don't know and they don't care about it it's quite strange because it had 800 games on there um, take away the PS3 titles. Like, let's say, oh, you don't want to stream, right? Right off all those PS3 games. Um, it was still 400 something PS4 titles. I mean, it was a lot of games. So for $60 for the entire year, it was just, it was like hard to say it was 
bad you know what i mean it just wasn't fantastic because it's always in the shadow of game pass where it's doing day and date releases and that is the biggest hottest item of game pass without the day one uh excitement without knowing that whatever you know 343 puts out or you know now activision uh blizzard i mean when all those games uh bethesda when all those games come out you know they're part of your subscription um all the aggressive third-party deals they've done i mean that is the greatest part of game pass because it's it's actually a lower volume of titles right uh, they often advertise over 100 but really game pass typically is over two to three hundred games at any given moment obviously titles are rotating out a lot more uh, more frequently than say playstation now currently as it sits today but um the point is uh, that is the biggest uh, seller of Game Pass currently, right? That's the biggest customer acquisition tool. Whereas for PlayStation Now, it was, you know, it predates Game Pass. It has so many titles uh, for 60 bucks. It's cheaper, and this is still going to be cheaper because you can pay annually. Um, and this is why I spent the longest time trying to tell people, like, this isn't really... It isn't really great to call it a Game Pass competitor because it's not directly answering the number one thing Microsoft is selling to customers. And, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just, you know, there's clearly two different strategies here. And this is exactly what we were told uh, prior to it being official. And even before the Bloomberg report, you know, I was saying on this channel for like two something years, like we need to consolidate these services. There's no point in having ps now ps plus now we've got the ps plus collection which is probably going away um and just getting rolled into this uh this relaunch right we don't need all these separate things the ps now name has baggage sony has this reputation of not caring for older games um so let's do a, a consolidation let's offer you know a library of classic titles from say playstation 3 where that ps uh, the playstation store on ps3 has hundreds of ps1 and ps2 classics um so now we're getting all that the psp titles playable on console that's so cool so i mean i do like that and this is what i was getting at is that they're going to make a service that works for their bottom line and you know they don't want a loss lead like microsoft is doing we pretty much have jim ryan now indirectly saying or at least this is how i'm reading is is that you know we don't think that model is going to work or it's going to reach you know the kind of numbers like spotify or netflix that you need to get to for those numbers to start working because microsoft is absolutely you know loss leading they're not going to admit it they're not going to uh say how much you know money they're burning they just say it's sustainable and that just more or less means we can afford to burn that cash and that's fine sony i mean the sony group they need playstation to be profitable um you know playstation takes up a very large part of their revenue in fact most quarters and i think the past how many quarters uh playstation has been the majority breadwinner for the sony group it is important that they you know re see a return on the uh, the business um so this is why I, I always was a little iffy calling this a Game Pass competitor or a direct one for one answer, right? So, so many places phrased it like that, that this is a Game Pass competitor. This is Sony's answer. But I've, I mean, I knew a long time ago, that's not what they were going to do, especially when we see um, the model of PS Plus uh, premium or or extra. I mean, they're, they're trying to get current subscribers to subscribe up you know they're trying to go for a higher average price out of people because sony also recognizes that uh by and large when it comes to the the console space you can only you can only get so many people to subscribe i mean at any given moment you're only going to sell so many consoles for the past 25 30 something years there's always been kind of the ceiling of like 200 like 150 to 200 million uh people actively buying and playing on consoles right it, it never really gets higher than that um and that's why Microsoft wants to go beyond console and get you to subscribe on a, a cell phone, on a PC, right? They're trying everything they can to get you to subscribe wherever. So at least right now, we can see how they're approaching it. Um, a lot of this was expected. Not a one-for-one -one answer to Game Pass. It's, in fact, firmly kind of in between what Game Pass is and what NSO is, where, you know, NSO is kind of on the weaker end microsoft of course on the higher end uh yeah a lot of this i think we we really saw coming um and also ps3 streaming 
I did try to warn a lot of people about that as well. Um, it would be nice if they really did put in the effort to figure out native console emulation, which, you know, we've touched on it before, but like in theory, they're to a point now where they could definitely get it to work. They've got source code. They know the PS3 better than anybody, but it's a matter of making that, you know, massive financial investment to reliably emulate PS3 titles uh, to have a good hit rate and then offering those uh, back on the PlayStation Store, which would have to be uh, relicensed if they want to, you know, sell them again. It, that's why Microsoft does the, I mean, we've been down that rabbit hole. It, financially, it's probably not viable for them, but, you know, we'll see down the road if they're, if they're really willing to uh, either improve their current PS3 server blades or, you know, let them go and figure out a way to, you know, start emulating uh, PlayStation 3 locally. But, you know, that's a, an entirely different beast. Anyway, we're really uh, rambling here. The one other thing we can mention is that uh, it seems like right now, if you're currently subscribed to PS Now without a PS Plus membership, you're actually getting rolled into the PS Plus Premium um, automatically, which is interesting. That would make it a lot cheaper for you. So not to, you know, put it out there, but like if you're interested, you might want to grab some PS9 memberships and stack that up as far as you want to. And perhaps you can get rolled into a, uh, get rolled into the uh, PS Plus Premium at a much cheaper cost. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. Uh, it'll be an interesting week to see how this plays out once the dust uh, really settles. And because, uh, you know, in this moment, people are going to be very critical of it. Um, but when it comes to the value and what they've announced so far, it, it sounds it's hard to argue when you look at the annual cost, right? That's what I was mentioning with PS Now. It's that it was never bad. It just had this uh identity crisis where people had this misconception misconception of it that it was awful and it's like for sixty dollars a year like you can't really say it's like that terrible right um and that's the same deal here i think this is better than ps now um hopefully over time uh the value proposition only gets better and sony continues their trend of you know adding more titles uh that stay on indefinitely um and also continuing the trend of you know day one indies that would be great um that would certainly be uh cost effective for them uh same with uh more recent third party titles perhaps make it so uh ps studio games go on the service after say one year or something right i mean there's ways they can go about doing this that helps their bottom line and that's how we have to really think about this but otherwise i would say it's uh, a good value dare I say it's a great value, but obviously it's not going to be mind blowing and that's um, the problem. But we do have to wait on, you know, what games are getting added and um, if they're going to, you know, add more titles on a, a frequent rolling basis. We'll see how that plays out. So there's a lot more judgment to hold back. But until then, I would say what we have so far is an improvement over PS Now and um, it should only be able to go up from here, right? We'll see. Uh, but if you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.